Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. For some, the snow is still falling. For others, not as much. For everyone in the Red River Valley tonight, strong winds continue to blow, leaving dangerous conditions. If there's a light at the end of this stormy tunnel, visibility is so poor, you can't see it. Snow totals in the Devil's Lake Basin have reached two feet, could get to three feet before it's over. And we just got word that Interstate 29 is now closed from Fargo to the Canadian border. We'll talk more about that and wind-related problems, but let's get the latest on what's going on tonight. Hutch is here with a first look. Hutch? All right, Mike, thanks so much. As we take a look at a series of cameras from around the region here in Fargo, we have snow covering the ground, but the visibility has improved just a little bit. Wishick, very snowy there. Binford, horizontal snow, zero visibility. Pembina, snow-covered and very icy roads. Here is a look at where the winds have continued to rip. Gusts near 55 miles per hour still in the James River Valley. So from Jamestown Valley City north into Devil's Lake, where the heaviest of the snow reports have been coming in throughout the day, the wind continues to be very strong. Here's a look at snowfall reports of the Fargo-Moorhead area between four and five and a half inches of snow. Grand Forks, six and a half inches of snow. Harvey, Devil's Lake, and Maddock all reporting 24 inches, Leeds 18. A lot of places with over a foot of snow, including Laramore. Now, many of these were measured earlier when the measuring was good and daylight was out, but uh, we'll probably be updating these first thing in the morning. Here's a look at the blizzard warning that was extended to include Fargo, Moorhead, Holly, Ada, and Crookston until one o'clock tomorrow. The radar shows that we still have heavy snow, but some of it pushing back towards Minot, some still here in the valley. We'll have hour by hour details on where all this white magic is heading. Uh, this is a dangerous storm system. Things will still be dangerous tomorrow, so you can plan on just kind of sticking around and we'll be here for you throughout the event. Sounds good, thanks. While most of you are tucked safely at home, the weather-related problems outside have more to do with the wind, trees, and power problems. Valley News Team's Joshua Peguero joins us with details on all of the scrambling that's going on to keep your lights on and everyone safe. Joshua. Mike, I just want to start that right now I'm outside the, uh, I'm outside the news station and it's pretty windy. It's died down from what it was just a few hours ago, but you can still, you can see the howling wind, how the snow is just coming up, which is, I'm sure it's out of the normal for any people from North Dakota. But this is a video from earlier today where, uh, where a power line was down by, uh, where a tree fell as well on a car. This is right by the Taco Bell in Moorhead. Uh, I spoke to police officer on the scene, said luckily no one was hurt. We've been hearing this all throughout the day on scanner traffic. Um, um, here's what the uh, XL Energy had to say about some of the calls that they've received. We pay really close attention to the weather, and uh, uh, there was an operations crew call, and uh, our local superintendent made sure we were going to have some extra contract crews. And XL Energy did tell me that they don't have any reports of major outages here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. But again, we've been hearing over scanner traffic that there have been car crashes, um, but luckily no injuries. I'm going to send it right back to you in the studio, Mike. Uh, reporting live in Fargo, Joshua Piguero, Valley News Live. All right, thanks. And as I mentioned earlier, we've talked all day about no travel. Most of the interstates are closed now. They started shutting portions down earlier today as the conditions deteriorated, especially to the west of Fargo and in extreme northeastern North Dakota. It was late this afternoon that I-94 was closed from Fargo to Bismarck. And as I said earlier, I-29 is now closed from Fargo to the Canadian border. Now that's not all. And I think this North Dakota DOT map does a great job of showing you how many roads are closed or blocked. Those are the ones in the red color. There are a lot in that Devil's Lake region, and until winds die down, I suspect there are probably going to be more. You can stay up to date as the storm rolls through by downloading the Valley News Live news app. You'll get breaking news alerts, school closings, and the latest weather headlines. Just search VNL News in the App Store or Google Play Marketplace, and you can download it for free. Let's take a look at live sky cam from Grand Forks right now. This is the campus of UND. Again, visibility is poor there. It's much worse once you get outside of the city. Highway 2 just to the west of Grand Forks is closed to rugby. And to uh, the south of Grand Forks now all the way to Fargo as well to the Canadian border, the interstate is closed. 
To the west of there, Devil's Lake continues to get hammered by the winter storm conditions. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie arrived just before conditions really started to get bad yesterday, and she's here now with an update. Courtney? Hey guys, here in Devil's Lake, it is white all over. We woke up this morning to giant mounds of snow, and they only seem to be growing by the hour. Take a look at this. This is a drift here in our parking lot. And as you can see, it is way taller than I am, and I am six feet tall. So just imagine, some of that could be out on the roads. That is how dangerous it is here. We've already got about two feet of snow on the ground, and we're expected to get another foot overnight. So it's looking like us and everybody who is stuck here in town is going to need to be patient, wait this one out before getting back on the road. Reporting live in Devil's Lake, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. All right, thanks, Courtney. And despite all the warnings and road closures, there's still a lot of people out on the road, and that's led to crashes, creating a lot of work for tow truck drivers. So much work that some motorists have to get service, but one group, uh, wait for their service rather, but one group for the FM area drivers say they're ready and waiting to use their personal vehicles to pull cars out of ditches or get drivers to safe and warm places. We had a couple people last year uh, that we pulled out that they had spun, spun off the road. Tow truck company told them, well, they're low priority. They near going to be two, three and a half hours. Messaged one of my buddies, got out there, got him out in about a half hour. The group can only help drivers on city and county roads. They're not able to help drivers stranded on the highway. For a link to their Facebook page, go to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story for free. There's new information tonight surrounding the search for a missing plane and pilot. The search has been delayed because of the weather, but a photo of the plane has been released. It's a single-engine Cessna 172, white with light blue markings. It left Aberdeen en route to Oaks, North Dakota. Authorities believe it has an emergency locator beacon, but there have been no reports of a signal detected. Moorhead police need help in finding a vehicle. They say about two yesterday, the driver evidently didn't want to speak to an officer and drove off, putting the public in danger. The vehicle is a newer style Dodge Avenger with Minnesota license plates. The car was last seen in the area of 8th Street and I-94. You have information on who the driver is, call the number that's on your screen right now, 218-299-5103. Authorities are asking for your help locating Matthew Hubner. He's wanted for felony failure to appear on four charges, including unlawful entry into motor vehicle and unlawful possession of drug paraphernalia. He also has an additional warrant for a misdemeanor offense. If you have information about him, call law enforcement. And in Fergus Falls, police are asking for your help locating 27-year-old Shannon Brown. She has an open warrant for violating conditions of release. Again, if you have any information, Call authorities. Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with no wait weather. All right, our blizzard conditions continue across the valley. Here's a time lapse view as you're looking at Interstate 94 and University here this afternoon. Now that's 32 degrees at 1:30 this afternoon, and the visibility started to reduce as we went past the midday hour. Then we got hit with bigger flakes, even lower visibility. It was gusty as well as snow started to accumulate across the Southern Valley here in the Fargo Moorhead area. In fact, in South Moorhead, I measured five and a quarter inches of snow out there. This is from Osnabrook and uh, Jaden capturing this view of right at two feet of snow. A lot of reports of two foot snow totals uh, basically from west of Grand Forks all the way into the Devil's Lake Basin north of there and then straight south into the James River Valley. Numerous reports of a foot to two feet of snow. And that's where the wind continues to just blister the region with gusts over 45 to 50 miles per hour. Right now, Jamestown, your gusts are still 54 miles per hour. That heavy, wet snow and combine that with these winds taking its toll on area trees. And Fargo with even just three to six inches of snow, likewise similar amounts reported in the city of Grand Forks. The weight of that snow and that wind causing some trees to uh, collapse onto structures and hopefully not cars. If you have 
time and your vehicle's parked under a big tree with a lot of snow on it and it's bending, you may want to move your car. Temperatures below freezing now for almost all locations, with the exception of a few holding on to 32, including Grand Forks and Fargo. Speaking of Grand Forks to Fargo and the Highway 200 corridor right through the uh, Griggs Steel and uh, um, trail counties we see the deep blues this area getting hit with some rapidly accumulating snow that punches into the uh, polk county area and also into norman county right now there's a little break in devil's lake at least showing up on the radar and then notice this band of snow is kind of getting pushed back to the west and this is where the real heavy stuff is so uh, that's going to continue to wrap around tonight as well our whole storm system becoming even more complex and it's going to be a tricky forecast the next 24 hours. We have the moisture train here, humid air working its way in. That's what you're seeing there. But this storm also sucking in some dry air as it spirals in this counterclockwise direction. That's going to cause the system to dry out, but it's also going to cause our widespread areas of snow to really start to break apart during the overnight. Now it's still gonna be windy all night with gusts over 40 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour. And as we wake up, the heaviest snow will likely be in the Devil's Lake Basin. Now that band of snow is setting up right here. Here, uh, from Grand Forks area into parts of Western Minnesota and near Fargo, we have another band and some more dry air out here circulating around. So through midday, we'll still have ridiculous conditions. But in the afternoon, you'll start to see the snow become less widespread and we're going to have hit and miss areas of snow showers that'll be heavy and the gustiest of the winds those will be pushing down to the south as they subside and really gusts will be only over 35 miles per hour at that time it's really in the late afternoon and evening when things start to dry and taper up now speaking of moisture uh, we're still expecting from now on up to another inch where you see the blues and the, uh, excuse me, another inch where you see the greens, half inch to an inch where you see the blue colors. Snowfall, these light blues, just a trace to up to three inches in a few spots. We could still see some bands depending on where they set up that produce that five to 12 inches of snow. And the best chance of that will be in our Western counties. So. Many of us will see the snow totals that we mentioned earlier in the show of upwards of two feet and have another five to 12 inches on top of it, particularly west of the Red River Valley. Here is a table for two feet of snow. <laughs> Thanks so much, Myra, for sharing. Here's a look at your planning forecast. So Saturday, blizzard warning continues until one. Then there's a big football game. Uh, the storm starts breaking apart and really diminishing as we go into Sunday, but we'll still have a chance of snow showers on Sunday. Little to no additional accumulation for most, so don't let that bother you. On Monday, can't rule out a sprinkle or two as temperatures try to rebound into the 40s next week. And then maybe if we can melt some snow and uh, get things back to normal for this time of the year. We'll have a shot at 50 degrees as we close out the work week, Mike. Dangerous, and we plan on being here first thing in the morning to update you so you can get up, get the very latest in all the conditions right here. Thanks. Up next on Valley News Live 10 at 10, how explosive impeachment hearings are impacting the campaign trail.